So it's kind of imp important to uh, be able to manipulate ASCII format characters. So let's go over that for a little bit. If you do man ASCII, you can see a, a table of all that, the ASCII values. And here they are in the different number bases, oct, uh, decimal, and hex. And um, the first few ASCII codes refer to these, these characters that are, are not printed. But around, well, at 20, you get space, which is a printed character. And then it goes up to, um, what's the, the, central, the central column is the decimal value. So when it gets up to uh, 127, that's the, the, last, the last one that's, that's defined. And um, so you can also describe the table in this sort of row column scheme. And as an exercise, based on what we talked about in the, in the previous video, let's, let's print out a table that's just like that. So let me erase this stuff. And so what I want to do is write a program that prints a table of ASCII values. Right. Um, so let's do an integer and make it equal to the first printing ASCII character, which is space. So if we were to look and um, and see how much or what's the decimal value of that, it's going to tell us that the decimal value is uh, 20. So the compiler does some magic where it, in the pre-processing stage it, uh, is it 20, did, is it 20 in hex? Did I do something stupid? I really hate making mistakes, but I can't seem to stop doing it. Maybe someday I, I will be perfect. Um, did I look in the wrong place here? The space character is uh, 32. Yeah, 32 in decimal, and it's uh, 20 in hex, so I read that incorrectly. And that was the output here, is 32. And remember that if I want to see it in uh, hexadecimal, then I can use x. And, and, and let me do that. In the program, I'm going to be doing that a lot because um, that's what we want to do, is print out the, the table. So first let's do a really crude version of the table. Uh, 4i equals... So the way a for loop works is you have really sort of three fields, and the first field you type in the starting value of the variable, and in the next field you type the condition under which you're going to be done. And the condition under which we're going to be done is for i being less than or equal to uh, the ASCII code of the tilde symbol, which is the last printing ASCII character. And in between, we'll increment i. So that makes make i one bigger, so we count up every time. Now you have an option of whether to put brackets on the for loop or not. Um, the difference is that without the brackets, only the, the very next line will be considered to be included in the for loop. So if you type, you know, um, print f something here like hey, and then you do it again, ho, then uh, what happens if you compile that? It So you go through here and about something like, uh, you know, 150 times it's going to print something out. So um, what does it print out? You can see that it prints out a bunch of haze and only one ho, and that's because the ho is not included in the for loop, even though I did the indentation. C doesn't give one crap about the indentation. It only cares about brackets. So it's very important to do the brackets. Even though the, the, uh, the indentation isn't necessary for the computer, it's still necessary for a human reader, and it's just like really unacceptably bad style not to do the indentation, even though it's not very functional. Okay, so we want to print out a bunch of lines, and what do we put on each line? We'll put, just like in the table, the octal code, and then we'll put um, so the decimal one that comes in the middle, and then we'll do the hex, and um, then we'll do the character. Okay, and so what is it? what are we printing? It's just I every time, isn't it? I, 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 I. And um, so this should print a, a crude version of the table. And if we want it, we want a new line every time it goes through. So we do this. 
and this table isn't isn't too bad, right? Notice that uh, the columns kind of shift over a little bit, but it yeah, and so you might not want that to happen. What if you don't want it to weave back and forth like that? You can use the uh, the field width to sort of standardize that so it's all in one big column. Right, so now that looks a little bit nicer, even though the the number of digits and the numbers is changing, you still have the, the regular columns. And you might want uh, a header. Uh, so how could you do that? Let's say we do, um, let me sort of steal this line here. To print out a string, the code is S. So here I'll do the, the headers. And instead of I every time, let's say what these things are. So the first it is the, uh, the octal, and the next one is the decimal representation, and then we have the hexadecimal representation, and finally we have the, uh, the character. So what we want is for those headings to align exactly above the table columns, and it works. Um, now in the table there's this nice line break in between so can we can we do that maybe so let's see uh, so what happens if we just do this isn't going to maybe look quite right but uh, yeah let's not do that so i'm just going to be lazy and just uh, that looks about long enough and let's see what that looks like not quite long enough, so I'll make it a little bit longer. And also, it needs to be tucked in. Okay, I'm satisfied. It looks great. It looks flipping fantastic. And um, yeah, that's it. So let me stop this video.